You're looking live inside of the Shield Club at Sporting Park, where tonight you'll meet the finalists for the Kevin Gray Soccer Awards Youth, Adult, Coaches, plus our Soccer Ambassadors of the Year. And welcome inside the home of Sporting KC. With Hugh Williams, I'm Dave Stewart. This is a celebration of soccer, and we were talking about it before, how good soccer in this town is. Some of the talent that we produce has gone on to the very highest level. Dave, I'm excited to be here. I'm proud to celebrate the level of Kansas City soccer. We got our hometown team over here sporting Kansas City with now with about six players in their squad. We got FC Kansas City with three players in their squad as well. And on the college front, Kansas City girls in particular are doing awfully well. We got Morgan Marlborough on the national under 23 team. We got Mandy Laddish who played on the U-20 World Cup team too. So Kansas City players and Kansas City teams are putting a stamp on this sport. These soccer awards named after Kevin Gray, the late head of the Sports Commission, who absolutely loves soccer. Uh, Gigi, one of the daughters, part of Team Gray, plays for you in club, and you won in Denver, so you go to Richmond next for Nationals, right? Absolutely. Kevin Gray was very important in this game for Kansas City on the political side of things, but more than that, he was a soccer dad as well. He followed his kids all over the country, loved this game, coached this game as well, and gave a little bit of input to the head coaches on the time to time too. The head of Team Gray, Katie, who joined Mick Schaefer on the field at Sporting Park. Joined now by Katie Gray, wife of Kevin for 23 years. And man, this thing's getting bigger and bigger this year, is it not? It is. We've added some new um, things to this year's program. We've got Ambassador of the Year, and that is um, given to a person or people who have just really done a lot for the um, sport of soccer in the Kansas City area behind the scenes. And then we also added Coach of the Year yeah. um, because there are such great coaches in this area. And this, this Coach of the Year award can be a rec coach, it can be a club coach, it can be a high school or collegiate or professional coach. So it's just all around, but they just have to be coaching in the Kansas City area. Well, obviously for so long, Kevin was the president of the Sports Commission. He oversaw Big 12 basketball tournaments, big football games at, at Arrowhead, baseball events, all that. But, but how big w was soccer in his life? I, I maybe didn't know how big it was, especially in your household. How, how big was sport was it? It was really big. Kevin, um, you know, he was into soccer on all levels. We started in the rec levels with YMCA, and then we went to the Leewood, and then we went into the Premier Leagues, and now we have a daughter that is playing in college. So he has been watching soccer games, or he had been, excuse me, I always do that, been watching soccer games for years. And he really felt it was very important to keep soccer in the Kansas City community and to find owners within our own community. How was he as a soccer dad, as a fan out there? Because I, I saw him, he used, to get, he used to get feisty out there. He was, and the girls would make fun of him because he <laughs> wore a fanny pack. No, Yes, he, he always <laughs> did to all the soccer games. And But he was good. He would shush me more than anything. Oh, really? So we really kind of stayed on opposite ends <laughs> away from each other because... I don't know. Everything I said wasn't right, but he was he was a great he was a great fan. All right, Katie Gray, I'm glad I didn't have to shush you. You were you were good on this interview. <laughs> I am too. Thank you very much. Sit back to you guys. Sometimes more peace in the family if mom and dad don't sit together at the games. Maybe with Katie, you know, it was the right decision with her, I think. I've been around Katie for a long time. You know, Kevin's such a huge ambassador for a game. Katie ran that household and ran those sidelines as well. The first category, youth male. Clay Stewart, our first finalist. He's headed to UMKC. We'll play for Rick Ben Ben, Kansas Player of the Year, two times first team All State, two times All Metro. And, you know, you're talking about a guy, Fred Schlichting, one of his club coaches, told me that when he coached him, he just found the game. They'd stick in the midfield, say, shut down their best player, five minutes left. We need a goal. Clay went and would get the goal. Absolutely. He's the type of player that every coach wants on his team. Very versatile, can play in any kind of position, but mainly played as a holding midfield player lately. He's the tempo player, the type of player that's going to get it, give it, do the simple things cor correctly, and very, very important part to any team. Clay, go ahead and stand up so everybody can see you. You can give him a nice hand. We appreciate Clay Stewart being here. Our second youth male finalist, Paul Dean from Blue Valley North. 
Dean Curley, a defender on the under-18 Sporting Academy team. He's a captain this year. He was also captain for the U-16s a couple of years ago, which means a good player, B, good player, and a leader. I guess that's C. Absolutely. He's a defender. He's hard-nosed. He's aggressive. He's tough. He's going to win the loose balls. And like you just said, he's the leader of their team. But, you know, everything we just described him on the field, such a difference to the personality of this kid. You know what? He's the type of player that every player wants to be his teammate. Paul will stay in town, play his college soccer at Rockers University for Tony Toko. Our third finalist, So Win Kim from Blue Valley West, currently on the under-18 Sporting Academy team. He's a midfielder. He is headed to Duke to play his college soccer in the fall. Plays wide forward. He's tricky. He's clever. Um, one of those creative players that's tough to defend against in one-on-one -on -one situations. Also very, very effective in set plays as well. He's, he's going to change a game with his speed and his creativity. Our three finalists are over in the corner of the room with Mick Schaefer. All right, guys, thanks very much. We're now joined by St you know no relation to Dave Stewart, right? No. Okay. No relation. Congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> Clay, thanks very much for being here. Congratulations on the nomination. Are you a defender? Are you going to win this thing for all the forgotten guys out there in the back out there? Uh, sure hope so. I mean, we tend to get forgotten about because of all the goal scores, but maybe I'll win it for everyone. Matt Beesler's here. He makes defending sexy. He's over there. We're, we're all big fans of his. Uh, Gatorade Player of the Year. Was that something on, on your radar? The state of Kansas, is that something you were shooting for? Yeah, I mean, it's always been a goal of mine, but I never think that I'd actually get it. But it was a great honor to get it this year, and I'm very excited to get that for my school. Clay, congratulations. Well, thank you. All right, let's bring in Paul over here. Now, Paul, you play for the, uh, the sporting 18U uh, team, mm -hmm. and you had to make the decision to quit high school soccer. How, how tough was that? Yeah, it was tough, um, you know, mainly because high school is just a little bit different in club. And, um, you know, I chose to play academy this year just because uh, the level of competition is so much higher and um, that was better for my future and if I wanted to get better as a player, I thought, I thought the best decision for me would be. So. Well, it certainly worked out and you're an Eagle Scout and yep. a violinist too? Yep. Really? How do you find time for all that stuff? It's hard. Uh, it's definitely a sacrifice to, you know, try and do multiple things. Um, but, you know, it's all those things I believed in doing. And um, it's kind of made me the person I, I am today. So, I'm, you know, I'm happy I've been able to juggle all those things. And um, it's worked out good. Paul, nice job. Thanks very much. All right, Soen, come on in here. How you doing? Good, how are you? You're going to Duke? Yeah. Oh, Duke, really? You yeah, don't like Duke? Uh, no, I, I, I like him just fine. Is Duke soccer as hated as Duke basketball? Uh, it can be. No, just yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing can be, right? With North Carolina and all of them. Yeah. So, yeah. What about that decision? What, what made you settle on the Blue Devils? Um, just... Everything, their program, their academics, they're known across the world, you know. So, you know, I thought it was a good fit for me. Uh, my parents had a lot to say about it, too. So, so you, all, you also play for sporting 18U. What that, what's that experience been like? Uh, man, it was awesome. I played for them for three years and totally took my game to another level. And uh, I loved it, and I want to thank John Perry for everything. So. All right, so congratulations. Best of luck. Thank you. Dave, Hugh, back to you guys. Fellas, thank you. I always like it when you see a group like that, and nobody's one-dimensional. They all do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, outstanding young soccer players, but outstanding young people as well. Just good character, it's people that we in Kansas City we can be very proud of. Coming up next, the finalists for the Female Youth Award plus the Adult Player of the Year. Matt Beasler is in the house. That's coming up next on the Kevin Gray Award Show on Time Warner Cable's Metro Sports. Back live inside of the Shield Club at Sporting Park for the first time, bringing you a live announcement show as the Kevin Gray soccer finalists are introduced here on Time Warner Cable's Metro Sports. And we are back with Hugh Williams, the youth female division, and that is in your wheelhouse, mister. Absolutely. That's, this is where I've focused most of my coaching for the last five to ten years and loved it. It's a different type of challenge. We talked about the guys that we just got nominated as being real nice people. Not sure we can say the same thing about these three next <laughs> ladies. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but, yeah, it, it's something that I've been doing for a long time. I'm very familiar with all these players. And we start with J.C. Johnson. And you know what stands out for me? 12,834 <laughs> tweets. She might she get to 13,000 by the end of the night because people are watching. They know she's here tonight, and she earned her way here. Just 
obviously a ton of tweets, but you know, right behind that is the number of goals she can score too. And she's very dynamic, very direct, scares defenders with a skill and with a speed. And you know what? When she goes at people, there's not a lot of better players in the whole country than JC. Emily Herndon on the Blue Valley Northwest State Championship team, Kansas Class 6A, also midfielder for Sporting Blue Valley ECNL. Absolutely. Emily is one of those glue players, can play anywhere again, um, supports players, make things easy for teammates around her. Scored two goals in the state championship match for uh, Blue Valley Northwest. There's been that Miramontes soccer machine, Sierra and Sinclair, and the one sandwiched in between Sydney, who is one of the three finalists in our category. A Kansas City soccer family for sure. Uh, Sydney is a tempo player, kind of like the point guard, I guess, on the soccer field. Everything goes through Sydney. She she kind of sets the whole rhythm of the game. When the team touches, when she touches the ball a lot, her team does well. Mick Schaefer has our three finalists. Mick. Right, guys, 63 goals this year for J.C. Johnson. That's a lot of goals. Do you have a post-goal routine that you do, a dance or something? No, not really. I just go celebrate with my team. Nothing you want to, like, show right now? Because, I mean, this is the time to do it. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> You're running away from the interview, by the way. Um, I hear your favorite food's Chipotle. Is that right? Yes, it you is. Do the burritos, you do the bowl, do you the tacos. What do we do? I do burrito. Okay. I'm very plain. I only get three things on it. What are those three things? Chicken, cheese, and hot sauce. Is that the key to your success? Yeah, you could say, yeah, i got to get the protein and everything in there. So. Nice job. We're going to say that. Hey, you're done. Good job. J.C. Johnson. Emily Herndon, this is Emily's second interview on Metro Sports. Congratulations. I'm sorry both times have been with, with me, though. Um, are you scored both goals in the state championship this year against your rival. How, how cool was that? Um, that was very cool. Being able to play Blue Valley North, our rival, in the championship game was great. And it was great to win the state championship my senior year. All right, what would winning the Kevin Gray Award mean to you? Um, it would mean a lot. Um, I got to play with the Peepers a couple of years, and it would just mean the world to me and very humbling, and it would be a great award to win. Terrific, Emily. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, let's bring in Sydney Maramontes. All right, so you played with both these girls, right? Yes. You got any um, dirt on either one of them? Um, well... JC's going to be my roommate, so I can't really say anything about her. But Going to Nebraska, right? Yeah, yeah. What about your coach? Hugh. Um, <laughs> we love Hugh. We have a love-hate relationship. but it Sounds like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you, you broke all the records, at least some of West, and some were your sisters, right? Uh, Did you take joy in that? Um, or sorry, it's Shawnee Mission West. Yeah, um, yeah it's, I'm very honored. I, I feel really lucky to be part of such an awesome program, and... Beating my sister's record is kind of cool, too. She's out there, too, supporting I you. I know. She's going to kill me later, but it's okay. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> yeah. Sydney, thanks very much. Thank Guys. Thank you, Mick. <laughs> the love part I get, Hugh, but the hate. What is there to hate? Well, what do they tend to forget? The person they hated was Vladko Andonovsky. I, I was the guy they liked. <laughs> Adult Player of the Year, starting with Matt Beasler. We watched him at Blue Valley West. We heard about him at Notre Dame. <laughs> We saw him come to Sporting Kansas City. U.S. men's national team really starting, shutting people down in the back. That a baby. Yeah, uh, you know what, Matt, Mr. Big Time now. Okay, but big time, but still a Kansas City kid too. And, you know, he, when you watch him play, you just think class. You know, he's the type of player that seems to have more time on the ball than he really does. And that's the difference to me, anyway, uh, from a good player to an outstanding player. MLS Defender of the Year on the World Cup qualifying squad and playing for the national team. You know, Kansas City hasn't come close to developing a player like that in the past. Very proud to have Matt as one of ours. Andy Greenbaum is here this weekend working. He's with Columbus. He is the crew's starting goalkeeper now. Eight shutouts a year ago for this year. He is 30. He is in his prime. He is playing some solid goal in the net there. The scary part about Andy being 30 is I coached Andy when he was 10 to 14 years old. Uh, that makes me pretty old now, I guess. But you know what? The team that he played in wasn't the best team that I ever coached which was perfect for him and for his training as a goalkeeper. We were getting pounded every game, and he'd be flying out some unbelievable saves, saves from him. So he's obviously developed from college now to the pros as well. Great goalkeeper. Our third finalist, Nia Williams, who back on Monday was named the Female the Outstanding place. Athlete of the Year at Missouri State. She now plays for FC Kansas Kansas City. Kansas she got City her kids. degree. She plays soccer full-time. She's your daughter. Congratulations. Well, thank you. I'm very proud of my daughter. 
honored and thrilled to be able to coach her. Coached her throughout her youth career, now at a professional level too. Um, she's tenacious, she's aggressive, and you know what? She's got an awesome dad too. Let's go to Mick Schaefer, who has our two finalists that are in the building. That would be Beasler and Williams. The adult player of the year. Does that sound weird, hearing your name next to uh, adult player of the year? I'm all grown up now. Yeah, I am. Uh, a little bit, but I'm getting used to it. Well, what's going on in your life what, besides everything? You sure you can make it here, aren't you? Are you can you afford to be here tonight? Is there a lot of stuff going on? I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, it's a good sign that I've been busy lately. Uh, with sporting and then even better uh, the national team. We've been watching with the U.S. national team. What's it been like so far? What's what's the experience been like? It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've enjoyed every second of it and uh, I'm glad that uh, we're getting results and uh, the main goal for us is to qualify for Brazil uh, for the World Cup next summer. So very focused on that and I'm excited to be a part of it right now. All right, go get it done. Thanks very much. All right, thank you. Matt Beesler. Let's bring in Nia here. How are you? Hey, what about t the timing here? You know, you, you go off to college at Missouri State, you graduate. What am I going to do? Oh, I'll just play for the new soccer league that's in town and get drafted by them. What's the last several months been like for you? You know, it was very hard going back and forth from school because I was spending a lot, like, the week at school and then traveling every weekend back. But it was great that my school worked with me and I was able to do both. And now I'm getting ready to, I'll be a teacher later on, but pursuing my dream right now. Exactly, that can wait. Uh, so if, if you win the award, is your dad going to cry? <laughs> I don't know. I've only seen him cry once, so okay. that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck to you, Nia. Thanks very much. Thank you. What happened? What? You don't look like a crier. Oh, I'm a very emotional type of guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is that third finalist who's in town. He did have a message on tape for Mr. Beasler. I just want to say thank you to everyone for uh, nominating me as a finalist for this award. It means the world to me. Um, growing up in Kansas City, there's a lot of great athletes and uh, a, lot of, a lot of great culture of, of sports, and it means a lot that you would think of me as a finalist for this award, and, and I can't wait to get back. Thank you very much. Matt Beasler, really? I mean, you kidding me? The guy makes a national team, a couple caps, and all of a sudden he just catapults into uh, you know, stardom ahead of me. And I want to say that I've been doing it a lot longer. Uh, I mean, the kid wasn't even born. I was watching Saved by the Bell growing up. So, um, you know, good choice, but, you know, whatever. Uh-huh. And, you know, they'll settle this on the field tomorrow night out here at Sporting Park. Coming up next, the finalists for the Female Youth Award. Uh, pardon me. You'll meet the finalists for Coaches of the Year, plus our soccer ambassadors. That's next on Time Water Cable's Metro Sports, live from Sporting Park. It's the crowd inside of the, the Shield Club right here at Sporting Park, ready for the big finish, not to mention a good-looking group of uh, well-behaved, attentive parents. Soccer parents are like that, are they not, a lot of the time? Always supportive. Always. And I tell you what, you, you, when you're into this sport, you are all over the country, a lot of times in the back of the minivan, and now you've got the movie that drops down, and that's the way the sport is today. Kids are on the move. Families are traveling. Yeah, you know what? Really, you know, we've talked about the, the quality of play uh, from our players. And, you know, in Kansas City, and we're going to talk about the coaches now, and some outstanding coaches in Kansas City. But without the support, you know, the commitment and the dedication and the sacrifice from the parents, this doesn't work. Let's start with Coach of the Year finalist number one, Rick Pribble. Dr. Rick from Blue Valley Northwest, state champions this year. By the way, they do call him Dr. Pribble in the building because he teaches – AP English, Lit 4, that's impressive. Yeah. Beyond the soccer? Absolutely. You know, not all soccer coaches can claim that, that's for sure. He's a veteran Kansas City guy, veteran Kansas City soccer coach. Um, Been here coaching when I first came to Kansas City in 1985. He was very much part of the whole soccer community then. His but, uh, two children went on to play at the Air Force Academy. And his teams are always, always very competitive. And this year won the state championship with a team that maybe didn't have the most talented players, had some very good players there, but you know what? He was able to have that team play for themselves, play for their teammates, and play for him as well. Our second finalist, Rob Herringer from Benedictine. The Ravens this past year able to pull off that rare double. Heart of America Conference regular season and postseason tournament titles. That went to the school up in Atchison. Talk to Kyle Gregg, one of his players, 
over the past four years. He said, you know, Coach is a student of the game. He's always watching film, reading books. He creates this professional environment, and he can do demos at training. If he wants to hit a 40-yarder, he puts it right on point, he said. He, he gets out there and gets involved. Absolutely. A former Benedictine player himself, this is a person that loves what he's doing in life. This is a person that does, loves the game, loves Benedictine, and does a fantastic job over there, too. You know, he, he's just one example, though, of all the many other quality college coaches we have in town. The likes of Tony Toko, Nate Hauser, you know, Ben Ben at UMKC, Sissel at UMKC, Casey Wobbly. You know, a lot of quality coaches here. But this person, Rob Herringer, has done a consistent job, and this year got his team to nationals. And you see Chris Lawson from Rockers. He's been there since the fall of 94. Five state titles on to the final four, 14 out of the last 19 years. You know, how do you how do you beat that? You know, the, the Kansas City soccer, we, you know, in this area, St. Louis was the power in soccer. Chris has helped change that. You know, the St. Louis teams now are very, very afraid to play against the likes of Rockets. And, you know, Chris has done a fantastic job with that. From the days that he was playing goalkeeper for Ben Papoula at Park University, he's developed a program over there, a program that when people come in, they know what to expect. Our three finalists are in the corner with Mick Schaefer, or they should be. Coach Lawson, that's going to be laps. That's going to be, he was just enamored by each word. Uh, the coach is making their way over to the corner. Mick Schaefer will handle the coach's interviews now. That's right, guys. Get on over here. We'll, we'll have uh, Coach Pribble talk for, for a long time, waiting until the, these guys get over here. All right, two state titles in the last three years. What are you guys doing right over there at Blue Valley Northwest? Oh, you, you know, no matter who the, the uh, jockey is, you need, you need the horses. And we've had some great kids there, and they continue to come. Uh, the club teams are preparing them really well. And uh, we've, you know, Northwest, we've got some excellent assistant coaches and that we couldn't do without. And so from, from the C team all the way up to the varsity, we've got kids who are playing soccer hard. Kevin Gray Awards here in Kansas City. Is that something that's kind of long overdue? Uh, I think it's neat. First of all, I'm very humbled to be considered, but I think it's neat to finally the uh, soccer coaches, uh, some tribute is given to them. And I can't think of a nicer person to get it from, Kevin Gray. Coach, thanks very much. Bring him Rob over here. Tied up on the cords here. All right, Rob, you guys won what, Hard America League tournament and the regular season. That's a tough thing to do. Talk about how special a season this was for you. It was the best season in school history, and I'm uh, very proud of our players for pulling that off. It wasn't an easy task, and uh, they did a phenomenal job. You had an advantage, too. It's a small school, but at the same time, you have a big recruiting base here in Kansas City just down the road. Absolutely. I think most of our talented players come from the Kansas City area or just outside, and they've led to our success over the last eight years. All right, congratulations. Thank you. All right, Chris, last but not least, sir, how are you? I'm well, now, you've done, you've what, what's the uh, Misha Coach of the Year Awards, Midwest Region Coach of the Year Awards, NFHS, National Soccer Coaches Coach of the Year Awards. Would you have any room on your mantle for this? I would try to make room. <laughs> you make room there. I'm just honored to be uh, nominated for such a, a great award for someone like Kevin who did so much for Kansas City, not just soccer, but sports in general. Well, it's great having you here. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Guys, send it back to you. Thank you, Mick. Tonight we're delighted to be able to introduce the Soccer Ambassadors of the Year. Their involvement with the sport goes back to the 1970s. Beth and Chris Christofferson, they chatted with our Mick Schaefer. All right, guys, thanks very much. We're down here on the field. They're getting ready for game day. We're joined by the winners of the Ambassador of the Year Award, the couple here, the Christoffersons, Chris and Beth. First of all, guys, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. What got you guys into youth soccer? Our oldest son, who was uh, in the fifth grade, played football, and he came home one day and said, I want to play soccer. And I'm from the University of Nebraska, and I said, you want to what? <laughs> That's not going to happen. So you two had never played? No, I would never played. But uh, we got a little neighborhood team together, and the guys turned out to be pretty good, and we got a lot of competition. We were the first Kansas team to end up going to Colorado Springs at the Pikes Peak Tournament, and then it went from there. Beth, it sounds so weird to say now, but back in the 1970s, when your kids were growing up, there wasn't a competitive youth soccer team on every corner like there is now. There, there were none really in town, were there? Uh, none on the Kansas side so much. The ones that were played over in Kansas City, Missouri, in the Kansas City Soccer League. 
All right, so tell me the story then, Chris. You guys you went to a number of leagues, got a lot of no's as far as, you know, playing above rec, playing competitive, so you just decided to start your own league? Well, she started the uh, Kansas Premier League with four girls teams. Uh, what happened was that USU soccer came in and split us away from Missouri. They started the state associations where they just went down state by state by state. And so all the people in Kansas were out. They didn't have a state association. So we decided we started this Kansas State Youth Soccer mm -hmm. Association. And then it just progressed from there. We started getting the, uh, the competitive leagues and coaches and stuff like that. But it took a long time, but it was, it was worth it. Well, Beth, for a sport that was foreign to both of you, what, what got you hooked? What, what, what kept you going in soccer for all these years? Kids. <laughs> Just like, like coaching the kids, seeing the results? Like, yeah, I like being around them, but a lot of it, you know, probably was the way they were and just the building of it. And it was such a good sport where anybody could play it. It didn't matter your size or anything. It was one of the few things that girls could really be involved in, and it's how I got involved on the girls' side. And, and you both coached you, your children, but once they got done with, with their soccer years, you stayed, stayed involved. Why, why so? I don't know. It just seemed like there was always something that had to be done, and we all enjoyed it. We met a lot of great people throughout the world just being involved in soccer. So that's that's one of the main reasons. And the kids, we like to be around the kids. So it was fun. It still is. Beth, what does winning this uh, ambassador award mean to you? I like number one. I didn't even know it existed. Until it's the I first heard year of it. it. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. That had. Um, I don't know. It's a it's an honor because even though I haven't been involved that much at the local or state level for about the last 10 years because, um, but I did a lot when I was, you know, all different levels. Uh, it's kind of nice to be recognized for what you've done. The uh, ambassadors of the years, the uh, Christoffersons, Beth, Chris, we appreciate the time. Mick Schaefer has that good speed, able to get from outside to inside with the Christoffersons' daughter, Jennifer. That's right, Jennifer's still here now. How much trouble are your parents in for making you do this interview? They're in big trouble. <laughs> I just thought I had to be here. I didn't know I had to have an interview or anything. Yeah, that's, how, that's how we get you hooked. Uh, <laughs> but what was it like convincing your dad from Nebraska, big you know, football fan, didn't know anything about soccer, to not only you know, participate in the sport, but embrace it? Well, actually, he started with my brother. And then um, I was in about sixth grade, and they didn't have a, a girls team. So I wanted to play, too. And so my mom kind of got it together. And that was the first girls team in the area. Well, congratulations to your parents and to you for the Ambassadors of the Year Award. We're back after this to wrap things up from Sporting Park. On July 13th, right here at Sporting Park, before the game against Toronto FC, we'll find out the winners in our Kevin Gray sports categories. For Hugh Williams, Mick Schaefer, and all the good-looking parents and kids here, I'm Dave Stewart. Good night from Sporting Park.